the major part of this Congress. We'll start with session one of the Congress. This session will have uh, four presenters, scientific, presenters of this, their scientific work. It will be moderated by Dr. Campbell Page. Dr. Campbell is, uh, is in the IULTCS uh, Secretariat. Uh, he's, uh, he was used to be ex chief secretary and treasurer of uh, the union. Uh, Dr. Campbell also really helped us a lot in the organization of this Congress. He was with us always. Uh, we are very grateful. Uh, Dr. Campbell will introduce the presenters, uh, a small uh, bio of them, and just a short overview, overview of what uh, the presentations of the papers are all about. Over to you, Dr. Campbell, if you are online. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I'm online. Can you can you hear me? Yes, hear you. OK, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Welcome, uh, everybody, to the beginning of the scientific papers at the Congress. Um, I would have been very uh, happy with how everything's run until now. Just a little problem with the sound there, but let's uh, it's getting better. Let's consider now going to the first paper of the Congress. It will be presented by Sao Ping. Sao Ping works as a doctoral student at the Shanix, Shanxi University of Science and Technology in China. Her main research area is chrome-free tanning agents. And uh, today her paper is the metal organic framework layered double hydroxide uh, to improve the absorption of chemicals in wet leather processing. Okay, can uh, I now welcome Xiao Ping to make her presentation. Uh, yes. Thank you for introduce and uh, uh, hello everyone. My name is Zhao Ping and I come from Shanxi University of Science and Technology and I'm very honored to have this opportunity to show you my recent work. My main topic is construction of green conductive laser. Laser weight process is the basic section of laser making. Um, those are include tanning, dyeing, and fat liquoring. As we all know at present, tanning, um, the usually used tanning agent is chrome tanning agent. But uh, the use of chrome tanning agent has uh, some risks, uh, such as the uh, law absorption and uh, the, pro um, the um, production. So, uh, and uh, sometimes dyes and fat liquorines also have the problem of the low absorption. Mm. So the current problems that are currently resolved is uh, to uh, replace part of all of the chrome tiny agent. And another one is to improve the absorption of dyes and fat liquorines. Uh, based on this background, um, and in order to reduce the pollution, our groups has conducted many researchers on the chrome-free tanning agent. Uh, at the beginning, the vanilla polymer tanning agent were researched, uh, and then the nanoparticles were introduced into the polymer, such as the MMT. And uh, what is also to mention is that um, in 2017, the layer double hydroxide were researched 
uh, including the intercalated polymer LDH and the calcite LDH and uh, uh, the containing zirconium LDH. And we find that uh, the LDH layer defects can coordinate with skin collagen and anions can be absorbed between the layers. So based on the research of the LDH, we do some research about LDH uh, or materials which is similar to LDH. Move LDH is a many liver structure materials with the LDH layered structure and the move power cavity structures. We imagine that whether, the, whether it can improve the tiny properties while it use it absorption properties to improve the layers dyeing and the fat liquid properties. So there we design and synthesized the 3D structural materials, zinc, zirconium, of LDH, uh, and use it in the chrome in, in the less chrome tiny process to investigate its tiny dyeing and the fat liquid properties. And, and all the, be the beginning we uh, image the, the properties is the basic property of the laser um, so that the laser can be used. But uh, based uh, on the usability, if we can give the laser a certain degree of the functionality, uh, maybe the laser industry will be uh, further improved. So there we noticed uh, the conductive laser because it have many uh, advantages, such as degradable, good hygiene, flexible, and wearable, and so on. Because of those uh, advantages, those will be used in many smart product fields. Uh, for example, the flexible or the electromagnetic shielding fields. So design and the development of chrome-free tiny agent Integrating coordination, modification, and uh, conductive network is very important. So there, um, we want to use the polyanic liquid, which has a good conductivity and uh, can coordination with other materials, and the polyanide, which has the electron electromagnetic uh, conductive properties and uh, the electromagnetic. Uh, shielding properties. The polymerization of MOF LDH and the ALS were synthesized in the first step uh, and used in the tiny process to give the laser a certain degree of tiny performance. Uh, and then the inter improve uh, the conductivity of the laser and to give the laser electromagnetic shielding performance. Uh, so based on this, uh, we're focusing on the 3D LDH materials used for collagen fiber uh, modification and uh, to do uh, two aspects worth. Uh, the first aspect is MOVE LDH and the second one is about uh, PILS MOVE LDH. Uh, about uh, the first uh, uh, aspect, uh, MOF LDH absorption of chrome tiny agent dyes at fat liquids. In, in this aspect, we design and synthesize the, the zirconium MOF tab. And then um, the LDH was grow on this tab to obtain uh, 3D materials zinc zirconium MOF LDH uh, with characteristic this 3D structure and find that uh, the zirconium zinc MOF LDH had the oxygen points structure with a size less than 100. And the introduce of the zinc mainly existed in the form of zinc oxygen bond in this system. Then we apply these materials into the, uh, these materials with only 2% chrome tiny agent into the tiny process, we find that uh, not only it's very facility uh, to the tiny properties, 
but also um, improved uh, the absorption of dyes and battery currents. Um, based on this, we speculated uh, on the overall mechanic mechanism that uh, the MOF LDH had the unique nano side made it easy to penetrate into the collagen and uh, the laminates hydroxine provide hydrogen bonds with carboxy groups uh, of the skin collagen. Uh, and uh, on, on, on other hand, mental ionic defect products the um, coordination bonding with the skin collagen. The second aspect is about uh, the PILS MOF LDH uh, replace the chrome tiny agent and uh, provide the conductive function. Uh, in this uh, aspect, we design and synthesize a new type of PILS and uh, introduce the MOF LDH in the first step uh, to the PILS to synthesize the, a composite named the PILS MOF LDH composite. We find that uh, this uh, polymer has a high convention rates and uh, the low viscosity. Uh, what is what is uh, mm, worth to mention is that uh, it has uh, a high conductivity, which could up to uh, 16. Uh, after applying this re, uh, this composite PILS MOF LDH into the chrome free tanning process, we find that uh, the tanning, dyeing, and the fat liquid properties all have the greatly improved and the temperature, shrinkage temperature of the laser could up to uh, 96.1. Um, after introduce the polyanide into the, uh, after introduce the polyanide into the laser, we can find that the electromagnetic shielding efficiency could reach 232. So the conclusion is that we synthesized and designed a 3D structural materials named MOF LDH uh, and use these materials into the low chrome tiny process and found uh, it not only can improve the tiny properties, but also facility to the dyeing and the fat liquorine properties. And then we introduced the MOF LDH into the PILS to synthesize the uh, composites. And this composites not only uh, introduce, not only facility to the tanning, dyeing, and the fat liquorine properties, but also can give the laser uh, a certain degree of the conductivity. Um, finally, I want to uh, thank you again for giving me this opportunity and uh, thank you for the support of the funding. Thank you, uh, our group leader, Professor Ma, and my mentor, Professor Go, and Professor Liu. Thank you for the students of our group to give me the help. Thank you for the help of the group of Professor Duan. And uh, thank you for your attention. Looking forward to looking forward to your suggestions. Thank you. That's all. Okay, thank you very much, Ping Zhao. And thank you. we will now continue with the next lecture. Um, Excuse me, Kemp Bell. Yeah, Excuse please. Uh, sorry, I should have introduced Lewis as my co-moderator. Uh, this is uh, something that just happened a few minutes ago. Thank you, okay. Lewis. Yes, please. No, uh, I just want to be sure that Pe does people know how to ask the questions? I don't think uh, people Please were all distracted. It. Can you explain it? Okay. Uh, when when if you go let let me see if I can share my my screen. No, doesn't show I'm here. Ready. There is, there is an option to ask questions, but we, we will answer the questions at the end of the session, okay? So we will go through the four speakers. 
but there is uh, an option to well I, I, I think people have to go back to the to the screen that shows the session day one okay on, on ah. this session day one on the right side there is a box question and answer and that you can submit the question at that point okay okay everybody you go back to the screen and yes. it's now yes here it is here it's pointing uh here is how it is you ask a question here and you click on this and then you ask the question it's now being shown there uh you you ask you type in your question and you can either do it anonymously or you give your name and then you submit your question and they will be uh, answered or put to the speakers for answers at the end of this session so in in about um, three quarters of an hour's time okay thank you so now you know how to do that thank you very much for the uh organized for doing that now we will come back to the to our session and the next speaker let me just is dr james kind of garage garage i probably pronounce it wrong excuse me uh dr james Kana Garaj from is from India. He has a doctor's degree from Anna University. He's currently working as a principal, senior principal scientist in the leather process technology group at uh, CSIR CL, CLRI in Chennai. Uh, he pursued his uh, his pursued his work as a Raman research fellow fellow and boys cast fellow he has uh, led many scientific projects and has written more than 50 papers in international journals he received the tansa award for from tamil nadu and is guiding many students okay so and he will now present a paper the dehearing process through a combination of oxidative and enzymatic approach sustainable technology for the leather industry. Okay, I hand over to you, Dr. James. You are there. There's Dr. James at a website. He's not logged in under his name. Okay. Okay, I've had a message that Dr. James has not logged in under his own name at the moment. Is uh, okay. It looks like we are going to have to go on is Ms. Uh, Eliza, Elise, Eliza Palomino logged in, has she checked in? Can we move to the next speaker? Can the organizer confirm that she is there? I don't think she is comfortable. She has not connected. She has not connected. Least, yeah. I saw emails. She was uh, sending emails about the connection problems. I don't know uh, if it has been resolved or not. OK. Ah, wait a minute, Dr. James is there. And I also now see that Eliza is coming in also. <laughs> do, 
can I just ask the organizers again? Is James from there? Has he now logged on? Hi. Hello. Okay, let's let's move to Eliza. Hello. You're welcome to you. Um, you are from Brazil as a fashion designer and a researcher examining material practices of fish skin ethnographic objects in national history collections uh, as cultural and ecological resources in the context of contemporary sustainable fashion. You hold a MA in fashion design and a research associate um, in the Department of Anth Anthropology at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. Uh, you're going to present now your paper, Patagonian Fish Skin Tanning Processes. And I very much welcome you to the Congress. Um, hi, we, we're really grateful for this opportunity to present our paper. Um, Patagonian fish skin tanning processes. And um, we just, um, I'm gonna uh, present my um, colleagues here, um, uh, Fabian uh, Gabriel Tratcher, um, who's uh, from the Secretary of Fisheries of the province of Chubut, Patagonia. Um, also Gustavo Adrián de Feo, who is the CEO of the Ars Tintoria Analytical Laboratory in Santa Croce, Sularno in Italy. And myself, Elisa Palomino from Central St. Martin's um, University of the Arts. Um, this is a part of a Horizon 2020 Arise uh, project. Um, who's the, we're developing fish skin as a new sustainable raw material for the fashion industry. But basically this uh, Patagonian fish skin project is promoted by the Secretary of Fisheries of the province of Chubut. And is led by Gabriel Fabian Tratcher, who's an agronomist, an engineer, who has a vast knowledge of fish skin tanning techniques. And since uh, 2016, he has published a large amount of bibliographic material on the tanning of non-traditional skins and has given numerous courses on tanning technologies in Argentinian universities and job training programs. He has also worked as technical consultant of several industrial tanneries as well. Um, this paper evaluates the traditional Tewelche fish skin tanning process used by um, Gabriel Fabian Thatcher in Patagonia He's been using a process which is easily adaptable to any location. And this project urges local communities to reflect on current overconsumption and waste and to recuperate and upcycle. The aim is to learn a traditional craft with low tech approaches and to produce a new material using the discarded fish skins from the daily diet and tiny materials available from local flora. These practices have the potential to offer important opportunities, reconnecting Patagonian communities with common cultural heritage. Um, the ancient tradition of using fish skin to create clothing and accessories is shared by several coast Arctic societies as part of their subsistent lifestyles, depending on aquatic resources for nourishing and clothing. And the specific Arctic groups with historical evidence of fish leather productions are the Alutik, the Yupik, and the Athabascan of Alaska, the Nifk, Nanai, and Ulchi Siberian peoples, the Ainu from Hokkaido Island in Japan, and the Hertse from Northeast China, as well as contemporary Icelanders. Antarctica has no population, but the Tewelches, the Selknam, the Yamanas, and the Alakaluf are some of the world's southernmost indigenous people closest to Antarctica. These indigenous groups from Patagonia, including Tierra del Fuego, were hunter-gatherer fishermen who developed navigation and hunting technology at sea that allowed them a very efficient capture, as well as the use of all the raw materials provided by these preys, such bones to make tools for tanning, and the use of hides and skins for clothing and footwear. There is not much literature regarding the use of fish skin by the Patagonian indigenous people, but they were known for the use of sea cow hides to make clothing to keep them warm and protected against the elements. They were making canoes and huts, and they also used to exchange it with other hunter-gatherers groups. These sea cow hides were also used for body coverings in funerary practices. And the Tewelches also clothed themselves with shirts 
which were made by overlapping sea cow hides and guanaco hides. The study of this leather technology, which is one of the practices that distinguish the indigenous peoples of Patagonia, can provide an invaluable information to deepen the interpretation of the culture, but also contributing to contemporary vegetable tanning techniques for leather. There is some um, little information available on how marine mammal skins were processed, but ethnographic sources provide data on the use of fat, raw liver, liver cooked with salt and with alum dissolved in water for tanning the hides. Again, there's not much literature regarding the use of fish skin by the Patagonian indigenous people, but this paper presents the reconstruction of a leather technology tanning process from the central northern Patagonian region. The project aims the rediscovery, the preservation, the reproduction and enhancement of ancestral techniques, respectful of local traditions. This um, second part of the presentation should have been presented by my, my colleague Fabian uh, Tracher. He's having issues um, to, uh, to join us. He's in uh, Patagonia currently. So I will uh, carry on and honor the presentation for him. Um, here we have um, the slides of the for um, the, the fish skins that have been used in this project. They've been collected from a um, freshwater fishing company in Masters Lake in Sarmiento, Chubut, in Patagonia. Um, this is an artisanal uh, commercial fisherman who catches rainbow trout, perch, and silver side. He goes fishing daily and has several gill nets that he collects and resets. Like every uh, food industry, fishing has uh, leftovers and the fish skin is part of what is left after the fish is gutted and cut for shipping. Most of the fish and these parts are used except for the skins. Turning these into leather makes perfect sense. Also, the environmental harm associated with transportation is limited in this case by sourcing the raw materials from the local fishery industry. The salmon skins uh, that Fabian um, has done, uh, they were done with mimosa tannin obtained for the bark of the acacia mersni tree, which is a polyphenol, which facilitates the penetration inside the leather that is being tanned. The color it gives the skins allows them to be dyed in a wide range of shades which give results that can hardly be obtained with some other sources of vegetable tanning agents. Commercial use of this acacia is very fast because within seven to 10 years after planting, and um, the herd wood can also be used for other purposes as well. And it belongs to the leguminosi family, and it can also be incorporate the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil through the association of the uh, bacteria within its roots. The microbiological uh, pickling of these sea bass shown in the picture, it was done with the use of acidification with bac bacteria instead of lactic acid. To reach the desired pH, the water is acidified with ferments made with these bacteria. These microorganisms started to develop lactic acid and a pH four is rich with the activity of such bacteria. On these slides here, we're showing a wide genetic diversity in corn that could be used for fish leather dyeing. This salmon skin was dyed with the juice of a specific type of corn, the Mexican Creole purple corn that um, they are trying to preserve right now. The fish leather was dyed without full on, but with a lot of hand movement and rubbing the skins. So the fibers of the skins are loosened. And in this way, there are no stains produced by sectors that react differently with the dye. The oiling was done in a bath with agitation for 40 minutes and the fixation with formic acid for 15 minutes, also without a full on. The oils were, uh, that were used were soya bean based and a mixture of soya bean and fish oil. All the processes of the wet face and the tanning processes were carried out in drums and the move movement was natural, thus replacing the action of the full on also, other actions was um, the polishing um, of the skins. And the shine that you can see on the skins on the right-hand side pictures are the result of the friction given using a polishing machine with a mechanical arm as, and a cylindrical agate stone. If this tool is not available, it can be done by hand with smooth stones or with glass bottles. Salmon has a good response to polishing without the need to apply finishing products such as modified casings. In this case, no casein or other finishing products were used. 
The tanning process was done without any machines, allowing the development of fish skin tanning in areas with electricity uh, deficits. The, mes the method does not intend to discard the use of drums, vats of drying tanks, but to show that it's also possible to tan without them. In this slide, you can see the photograph of Alicia Guzman. She's um, also a, a student of uh, Fabian. Um, and she's from Chubut. She's a leather tanning teacher. And she uses a lot of the fish weights uh, from the effluents in the area where she lives in Chubut. And she's been using it to tan different fish leathers and to produce um, items like this uh, wallet fish leather that you can see on the right hand side. And here you can see some of the products that um, Fabian has created with different local people. Sometimes were um, different products that they did uh, with uh, different um, students um, in local university. On the left hand side, you can see beautiful woven material, which was the best solution using um, hike skins, which are really thin and very narrow. So they were weaving them together. In the middle, you can um, see some wallets done with the Patagonian perch by Patricia Casse. And on the right, you can see an engraved poly, um, pyrography of Patagonian fish leather, which was done by um, Nicolas Hernan Alonso. And now I leave the word to my colleague, um, Gustavo De Feo from Ars Tintoria um, Laboratory. Thank you, Gustavo. Yes. Well, hello. So um, we ran uh, several tests on, uh, on fish skins for these projects and others. And uh, well, the, what was most impressive of it is the tensile strength that the material can develop. Um, in this case, we, we tried also some tests uh, with the Martindale um, ramming tester, uh, abrasion test, but um, clearly the results were not uh, excellent. And uh, let's say the effect was very similar to what is normally achieved with uh, snake skins. And that is due to the, um, to the pockets uh, where, the, where the scales are placed. Regarding the, the tensile properties of these materials, where um, we have tested in this case uh, two, um, two different processes the um, a plain uh, mimosa tanning process and then with um, uh, the agate um, treatment um, where the tear low was really very high considering the the low thickness of the material so the um, we can see that in this case the media uh, thickness is 0 for, uh, 57 mi millimeter and uh, we have achieved um, a media of 51 Newton. That gives a near 100 Newton per millimeter specific tearing load is really high. And doing uh, a close um, look to the, um, to the process uh, and uh, taking a look to the microscope, like in the image that we have just shared, uh, you can see that there are parallel uh, fibers that are very, very straight, uh, straight and uh, are giving these peculiar strengths. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we would really would like to stress that all this work has been done uh, by Fabiana Tracher. He was really having uh, many difficulties to join us in the, in the conference. So we would really would love to honor his work, uh, both for the presentation and for the paper. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for this very interesting paper, Eliza. And remember, you can ask questions. I think you may have to go out to full screen and go down, and you'll see a Q and A sign on the right. And if it's a Q, if you want to ask a question, you can type into there. Okay, so. Just get your fingers moving and prepare to do it. Okay. Yeah. You'll see again or again here. Ask question and you click on this. Uh, we already have one question uh, in there for 
the first speaker, and we will cover that at the end of the session. Okay, let's carry on. We still have one speaker, Mr. Jia Singju, or Singju Jia, is somewhere in our 101 logged in members. Okay. Yes, he's there. Okay, now I see him. Okay, so if it, we will now proceed to your talk, just allow me to first of all, to introduce you, and then you can proceed with your talk. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Mr. Xingzhu Xie, he is from the Sichuan University in Chengdu, China. And this is where he works. And he would like to present a paper on the preparation and application of polyeth polyethylamine triazine derivatives as a chrome-free tanning agent for cleaner production. Okay, Mr. Xinju, I hand the floor to you and you can proceed with your presentation. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. I'm honored to have this chance to share my research on this special occasion. The topic of my paper is pre preparation and application of polyether amine triazine derivatives as a chrome-free tanning agent for cleaner production. The outline of my presentation as follows. Let's start with the background. As we know, the chrome tanning is the most widely used tanning technology in the world. But the accompanying emission of chromium and the neutral salt make it difficult to realize cleaner production. Considering those problems, some substitute tanning agents have been developed, such as aldenhyde derivative tanning agent or metal tanning agent. However, even though a preferred chrome-free tanning process can be achieved via those methods, some problems like potential from aldenhyde risk can still be encountered. So in this work, start with the structure activity relationship of tanning agent. I mean, triazine uh, terminated tri polyether was chosen as the backbone due to its good water stability and controllable molecular weights. As for the active group, cyanuric chloride was used to react with ED on account of outstanding combining ability of chlorine uh, with collagen. Can, can I just interrupt? Are you, do you have a PowerPoint presentation that you can share the screen with us or? Okay, okay sorry. Okay, I, I, I can't share my screen. Ah, uh, the IT okay. people should have given you permission to do that. Okay, sorry. Can the organizers allow him to share the screen? Yes, you now can, can you see it? Yes, yes, thank you very much. Now we can see it. Thank you very much. Okay, sorry. No problem. Uh, okay, in this work, start with the structure activity relationship of tiny agent. I mean, terminated polyether was chosen as a backbone due to its good water stability and the controllable molecular weights. As for the active group, cyanuric chloride was used to react with ED on account of outstanding combining ability of chlorine with collagen. Sorry. According to the following reaction, ET was prepared. A large number of terminal chlorine groups in the ET structure could react with amino groups of collagen and provide cross-linking, while the backbone of polyether could use to adjust the molecular sites and provide water stability. Then the product was proved by the FTR and NMR. Further, the tanning condition of ET was optimized. 
according to the research results, the tannin process of ET is a balance of hydrolysis and combination. At low pH, the reaction rate of ET is a balanced. At low pH, the reaction rate of ET is slow, but pH higher than seven could lead to lead to the extensive hydrolysis of ET. Besides, increase, increasing the tanning temperature could benefit the reaction rate. So the optimized tanning condition of ET was tanning at pH of six for three hours, then treat at 45 degrees for 2.5 hours. And the ET dosage was further investigated. As we can see, after tanning with 8% of ET, the shrinkage temperature and thickness of the skin increased significantly. Uh, excuse me, can you move your yeah. slides on? You're still on slide two or something. What? Okay. Just move uh, when, whenever you need to move your slides on. I have a feeling those slides were not moving. Okay. The thermal analysis results showing that ET tanning could promote the thermal stability of collagen. The introduction of covalent cross-linking and the presence of rigid transient ring in collagen fiber could increase the thermal decomposition temperature of second stage. The theta potential is used to evaluate the charge of collagen. From the experimental results, the isoelectric point of collagen tanned by ET decreased from 4.71 to 2.85, indicating that a large number of amine, amine groups in side chain of collagen were blocked, resulting in the decrease of the isoelectric point. Collagen is a polymer material with a certain degree of crystallinity. The X-ray diffraction is an effect means to understand the change of the different structural levels of collagen. According to the XRD analysis, the effect of ET on collagen will not affect its advantage, uh, advanced structure. According to the analysis of physical properties, it can be seen that ET tanning gives laser better tension stress and tear stress, and the ex existence of transit ring have a positive effect on the fullness of laser. The contrast ex experiment of wireness shows that ET10 worldwide has outstanding wireness and can adopt the production of light color laser. Then the morphological photos revealed that ET has distributive to the fiber adhesion of laser and the improve the fiber looseness. At the end, the environmental factor was investigated. The results showed that compared with conventional chrome tanning, ET tanning did not need neutral soil, so the chlorine content in the wasted liquor was significantly decreased, and the emission of COD and TDS also reduced. Those are the main conclusion of this study. In general, ET tanning agent can meet the demands of leather industry and have a good environmental benefits, which can provide guidance for the development of clean leather manufacturing. Thanks for Professor Peng Biyu for his meticulous guidance and thanks all members in our lab for the support and help. Thanks for your attention. Uh, in case you didn't see the front front picture, uh, I will sh show it quickly. Okay. Yes. Yes, please. That's it. That's that's the uh, activity and the structure relationship of this uh, tanning agent. And that's the optimization of the ET tiny agent and the temperature optimization. And at uh, eight percent, eight percent of the dosage, the the shrinkage shrinkage temperature and the thickness was uh, uh, significantly increased. Uh, 
Okay, thanks. Okay. That's, that's fine. Thank you very much, Mr. Xingju. Now, so anybody have questions relating to that? Remember you type them into the Q&A and we will view them in a minute. I will hand over, Lewis, do you want to handle the question part? Yes, uh, thank you, Kempo. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen here. Uh, Yes. Uh... Huh. It was good. You had it. <laughs> you had all can the questions. Can, 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 can you see? I can see you at the moment, but we had your questions before. It's, it's, I cannot share it. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. This is it. This is good. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is the first question for our first speaker. Do you want to make uh, a comment, Bing Xiao? Uh, hello. Hello. We hello. can hear you. Yeah. Yes, we can hear uh, you. About, about this question, um, uh, the polymer. And the composites I uh, synthesized, uh, uh, such as the PALS MOF LDH, its conductivity is 16 um, millisiemens per centimeter. Uh, and uh, after we use it into the tiny process, the laser electro electromagnetic shielding properties can reach to uh, 32. Decibel. Thank you. Uh, just one question from me. Is that good, medium, or bad? Um, I think um, the polymer is good, but uh, for the laser, it uh, is uh, medium, medium, and uh, okay. have uh, and can um, be okay. better, be better. Yes. Okay, so you can make it better. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> no, it's interesting to have conductive uh, gloves and things for using electronic equipment and also for screening uh, electronic radiation. Yes. Okay. Lewis, next question. Yeah, I think this question is uh, directed to us. And um, again, I'm really sorry that um, Fabian Tratcher is not with us and he cannot answer this because these are all different experiments he's been doing in a really remote area of Patagonia. Of course, everything he's using is, is waste. And in this case, he was using the juice that it comes after cooking the corn cobs um, to feed um, the, the people in the area. And um, we, are, we were talking about the different um, kinds of corns that are available in the area. And there was a particular one, which was the purple corn, um, which comes from uh, Mexico. And it gives a beautiful um, shade, this kind of dark shade of brown that, that he was using. So of course it's ethical because he's using the juice of a uh, corn who's gonna be used for food. And the, the juice is gonna be wasted once you eat your delicious corn on the cob. I don't know if um, Gustavo has anything else to, to add into that. No, no, nothing to add, but uh, yes, uh, normally, um... Uh, you can use leftovers of, of uh, the processing of corn that uh, normally it is cooked before canning. So uh, even when you, you are processing it, uh, you, you get a um, quantity of polyphenols that uh, can be used for, for other applications. In this case, I think it's interesting the application to it uh, as a dyeing material. 
Thank you, Gustavo. And maybe Gustavo can answer as well the second question, which is much more um, um, specific <laughs> about the microbial acidification. We were discussing it with Fabian last night as well. And um, I'll leave that to him. I, I'm, I'm more the historian into the whole uh, picture. Thank you, Gustavo. Yeah. Uh, no, in fact, uh, yes, it's something I have discussed longer with Fabian. It's a pity that he's, he cannot answer personally. But uh, yes, um, when we were discussing about uh, new possibilities of making a fully biotechnological process, well, he suggests me this idea. And really, it's very interesting because just and in a relatively short time, so we are speaking of a couple of hours, so the, the use of um, these um, microbes uh, can uh, generate uh, lactic acid and uh, at this point really making a, a deep uh, pickling. Uh, clearly, um, we have to be careful because uh, if we don't uh, use some salt, so for the time being, we cannot do it, do it without salt. So we, we can get uh, some uh, acidic swelling. Okay, thank you. Next question. Amazing. Um, yeah, again, uh, Fabian would have been able to answer all these questions um, and you will be able to read the, the paper as well. So definitely you will have all these details um, and, um, and you will be able to, uh, to talk about the amount and, and so on. Again, um, um, Fabian is on the other side. I mean, I wish it could be with us, but, um, but it's just really, he would have, I don't know if, if uh, Gustavo can answer to any of these questions. Probably not because he didn't do that himself. No, not, not to this. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff, for your question. Do we, right. Metallic audio, this is the first speaker. This is back to you, uh, Ping Sao. Mrs. Sao, do you want to answer this question? Can you make a comment to this question? I ah yes, she's coming. H Hello. Hello. Can uh, can you see I'm the sorry. question? Um, it's quite. It's quite complicated, but maybe you can answer this or make a comment. The um, zircon zirconium metal normally would combine with chlorides to make tetrachlorides, which could which could be an environmental problem. How do you stop the zirconium combining with chlorides? Um, in the previous in the previous work, we have researched the, about the uh, the zirconium containing LDH, and uh, we find that uh, after ending the zirconium LDH into the layer tiny process, uh, the zirconium will um, coordination with the carboxy groups. So um, the zirconium will have a bond with the carboxy groups uh, in the laser skin collagen. Uh, so it will um, not enter the environment, I think. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Do we have some more questions, Lewis? Campbell, yeah. Campbell you hear me? You hear me? Yes. Jean-Pierre, I hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, wow, hey, can you turn some other microphones off? Off. You've got bad... Uh... It's okay now? It's okay now? Yes. Okay, the, 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 the... No, no, no. This, you have to turn other... There's some other microphones on there somewhere. We have very bad interference. You have to turn off.
Okay, maybe while you're organizing that, Jean Pierre, we no, get. No. It's okay ah, now. You... Yes, that sounds better. Yes. So the it's about the first. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. No, it's good. It's about it's the about first presentation. It's about the first presentation of Miss Sao Ping. Was there? Okay. Oh, no, we can't hear you now. We can't hear you. Jean Pierre, Jean Pierre. No sound. Eliza, you have a chance to read the Okay. Yeah, the next definitely. Question. Maybe um, we can. Yeah, I mean in, in my case, um I've been working with uh, different um technologies and working with different um indigenous technologies all around the Arctic, and it's always been with fish skin, which uh, um the, the issue is that it's a, it's a, a relatively small skin. It's something that could be um, provided within the area, always using fish waste for areas like um, uh, with, uh, in the coastal areas, as I said, like rivers, um, oceans, etc. So um, this is what we pretty much um, used to and in the whole um, project that we work in as well with Gustavo. In the case of, um, of Fabian, I know he's been working with different other skins, but what's really interesting, again, is like uh, working with a material which is relatively easy to, to work with, uh, to transport, and that is definitely um, a waste. So that's quite important, but I'm sure the, the same, a similar process could be used um, for the different skins. I don't know if Gustavo has anything to, um, uh, to ask, uh, to, to add into that. Not really, not a lot to, to add, but I know Fabian is working on also on, on other types of uh, skins. And uh, yes, I'm sure that uh, skins like goats or sheep can be perfectly processed uh, with these uh, organic uh, processes. Okay, thank you very much. Jean-Pierre, have you got it sorted? Can, can you come in now? I see you've tried it. Campbell, you hear me? Yes, I hear you. We don't hear you. You don't hear me. Oh. Because otherwise it's an echo. Yeah. Okay, so You're... I repeat my, my remark. Yes, please. Good morning, progress. Who? Sue Campbell, you hear yes. me or not? Yes, yes. Okay, so I repeat my question because I don't know whether it's clear or not. The first slide of Ms. Lao Ping, she said that chrome tanning agents are restricted due to their risk. Uh, oh, sorry, but I have to repeat again because the microphone was out. So Ms. Lao Xiang, she writes, on the first slide, chrome tanning agents are restricted due to their risk. No presenter should say something like this because this is totally wrong, you know. Uh, she can make a present, good presentation, but there's no need, no need to, to, uh, to say wrong things, you know. Uh, chrome is uh, allowed that the 90% of the leather in the world, or maybe less, are tanned with chrome. Huh? So it's useless and it's not, it's, uh, it's very bad for our industry to say things like this. It should be avoided from all presentation. And I guess that in, for the next presentation, we will find the same sentence, which is really not, uh, not fair. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I, I accept the comment uh, that this people here have to understand what is being used commercially is uh, you, you have to be very careful when you make these very wide, wide statements uh, about this. And uh, the industry is using chromium for tanning leather. Okay. I see there is another question here come up. Mrs. Mr. Shi Singshu. 
Are you able to answer this question? Yes, yes. Uh, the laser was uh, the laser was crushed crushing into tiny grains, then and make it the aqueous suspension. Then the zeta potential of the suspension was measured with a zeta potential measure in instrument. Yeah, that's that's how I measure the zeta potential of my laser and the, the untreated collagen. Okay, so the sample was ground into small particles and suspended in water yeah. solution and therefore using a zeta measurement, zeta, this instruments available to measure the zeta potential. Okay, Yeah. thank you very much for that answer. Do we have any more questions, Lewis? No, no more questions, yes. Okay, that looks like it's the end of the session. Uh, if I figure, we are now, are we running half an hour before time? Mr. Chairman, I think. Yes, I think we are a bit, uh, we have time, uh, but if uh, we are through with all questions, and yes, and this, is, and this is some questions from the floor there, some. Uh, if we are through, there will be a handing of uh, certificates to the presenters, which I will okay. request uh, uh, Mr. Auracha, our IT expert, to take over. This is uh, one of the presenters. Uh, this is a certificate. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, we can't we can't send it ele <laughs> electronically through to your computer, but you will you will get it. You will get it. Okay, the second uh, speaker, I think, uh, it will be mailed through your address, but here simply it's displayed. Thank you very much. These are the three presenter certificates. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We didn't see the one for Mrs. Zhao, but I'm sure that she will be getting one as well. Possibly it came up before. Okay. Now, Mr. Chairman, do we now make a lunch break? I think the other, the third speaker didn't, turn, the fourth speaker didn't turn up here. So I think we, uh, I think we uh, now take a lunch break until 14.30 Ethiopian time. Is that correct, Mr. Chairman? Yes, yes, you are very right. Uh, we thank all the presenters. We particularly thank our moderators, uh, was Dr. Campbell and uh, Dr. Lewis. Uh, uh, we will break uh, for lunch, but during the break time also, it is a time to, to go for uh, the posters uh, that are uploaded on the site. Uh, uh, they are uh, virtually, uh, displayed uh, so for all of you who are interested uh, you can browse and see the different posters uploaded i thank you very much uh, we can break for lunch and come back uh, at 14 30. thank you very much thank you all okay thank you everybody and thank you to the speakers and remember if you go back to the starting or go back a page, you can uh, check into the posters and you can, while you're eating your lunch, you can uh, have a look at the posters. Okay, thank you and see you after lunch. Thank you.